Brawls to the left of me, walls collapsing to the right in the CWC. Among the ineffective security, I'm John Rentham with my review WWE NXT as well as my NXT TakeOver 36 predictions. Let me know your thoughts on this go-home show for TakeOver 36 as well as your predictions for TakeOver 36 in the comments, please. I've said TakeOver 36 so many goddamn times, it's lost all fucking meaning. But yeah, this show opened good, closed good. There was some good stuff in the middle. There were a couple things I didn't like, but it is what it is. Uh, this was one of the breezier editions of NXT, in all honesty. And apparently Kushida was not medically cleared, so Roderick Strong has an open challenge. Who answers it? Ilya Dragunov, because he's looking to fight. Apparently Pete Dunne didn't beat him up nearly enough last week because he's just bound to fight. His name is Ilya, and he loves to fight. Wait, no, that was Finley. But honestly, it would fit for Ilya as well. So they had a pretty, you know, damn good match here. I mean, Ilya was putting on a good performance. He was rushing through this goddamn thing. And if you got those puns, well, I mean, I got plenty more where that came from. And it was a chop fest, you know, kick, punch, it's all in the mind, some good wrestling, some good strikes. Um, and I don't understand why in the world they need to do the apron bumps, and there was one particularly scary apron bump a little bit later. But, um, man, it was a little bit scary that Dragunov got busted open, I mean, badly. He had the proverbial crimson mask. But he would not be denied Torpedo Moscow, one, two, three. And then he just kept calling out Walter, kept screaming, Walter, Walter! Um... Walter didn't show up. Yet, that is. Uh, they would hype that up a little bit later. Prime target on o o o O'Reilly and Adam Cole. They go over their history. It's for O'Reilly versus Cole 3, Revenge of the Sith. And please, I don't care whether Cole stays or whether he goes. Just let this be the end of this feud. Please, let it be the end of the goddamn feud. Um, Do you think Cole's going to leave? Do you think Cole's going to go and be all elite? Or do you think he's going to stay and give up his Twitch? Honestly, I could see him leaving because if he wants to keep his Twitch channel, he makes quite a bit of money there. He likes to play video games. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? As for this match, well, I think it's going to be pretty goddamn good, but I'm saving it for my predictions. So, um, Hit Row shows up. Look, I like Swerve. I don't care about anybody else in this group, and they are angry at Escobar for stealing Swerve's grill. And robbed the jewelry store and said, make me a grill. Man, I sound so goddamn white saying that. And then Escobar shows up on the screen in the parking lot and says, hi, you burned my mask. I stole your grill. Hey, come out, swerve, and I'll give this back to you. No shenanigans. Oh, wait, while Mendoza are there. It's a three-on-one. And then Hit Row takes, like, you know, about five years to get out of the fucking ring. And then we have a pull-apart brawl where B-Fab, I guess her name is. That's, a, that's like a badly generated name, but whatever. She has a pipe. Why is there not... A woman in Legoland Phantasm to even the odds. I mean, in all seriousness. I don't have a problem if you want to involve women in a brawl and everything, but you got to have the odds, uh, you know. You can't, you can't necessarily have the odds stacked in favor of one or another, especially since it's two heel groups. I mean, I guess Hit Row's de facto faces. But honestly, I'm cheering for Legoland Phantasm myself. So it was what it was. It just, it just I, I, don't, I don't care. This segment was stupid to me. I understand what they were trying to do, but I don't care about this feud. So, um, uh, L.A. Knight, rather, uh, is talking to Cameron Grimes while he's working out and then goes to Josh Briggs and says, hey, beat up Grimes, uh, you'll get five grand before and five grand after. And, you know, after you win. Take him out because I gotta face him at TakeOver. Okay, I'll do stuff for money. And then Teddy Biasi is on commentary and then L.A. Knight joins and it's Grimes versus Josh Briggs. The match was fine. It was fine. It was a typical Cameron Grimes match. I like Grimes as far as his wrestling. I'm not really sold on all this stuff, but some people like it, and that's fine. Cave in, one, two, three. And then Knight, um, you know, knocks down Teddy Biasi. Can he get arrested for being up the elderly? Will you be serious? And then he lays out uh, Cameron Grimes with his finish. And they're still doing this Gargano stuff, where apparently, you know, Johnny Gargano and Candace, they are going to have a kid soon, a kid that already has more personality than they do put together. That's unfair. Indy shows up, and she's all right. She's got the gloves on. She's, like, you know, all in uh, into this whole thing with uh, Dexter Loomis. <laughs> then Loomis just suddenly shows up. How Gargano didn't see him there, I don't know. He's like, how long have you been staying there? Hey, how'd that cake taste last week? She's... <laughs> Indy says, oh, he loved it. He even had room for pie. Indy, my God. That was pretty funny, though. <laughs> um... We got a couple of Rampage ads during this because AEW is invading and they're going after this a Rampage all over. In all seriousness, if I'm trying to get more eyeballs on my television program, then I would want to go after the biggest brand, you know, as far as global reach. 
And it's going to help out AEW. This uh, is going to pay off. Maybe we can actually get, you know, uh, the fan bases to play nice and just enjoy the shows for what they are. So, uh, they had Zoe Stark and Io Shirai backstage. I forgot the Women's Tag Team Championships existed on, you know, Raw, SmackDown, as well as NXT. Seriously, too many titles, way too many titles. More titles does not solve everything. So, Jesse Command, Robert Stone uh, with Frankie Monet versus... Uh, Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis. By all accounts, I should hate this. I should absolutely hate everything that's going on with Indy and Loomis, but they're making this work. Despite the goofiness, they are making this shit work. Um, Beth was encouraging Indy and everything. Like, you know, she's been on board. She's been in all this index, if you will. I did like how Loomis reacted to Indy doing the crawl and everything, which I think many uh, would enjoy seeing Indy crawl up to anyway, moving on from that. But it was kind of funny, like, his reaction. Because the motherfucker never blinks. Um... There was some ridiculous comedy. Robert Stone, who actually can wrestle, but was wrestling like a manager. Um, he was just doing what he did. And Indy, you know, did a... Uh, Indy standing by her man later. Takes uh, Kamea back in the ring and ends up locking on the silence. And while uh, Loomis has his own version on Robert Stone outside, Indy gets a victory and then goes and talks to Beth. Beth passes her something. It's brass knucks. She's going to know. Uh, she has a ring. Oh my God. Index is engaged. Man, that didn't work at all. It's an eye ring. The eye has it. It's the one ring to rule them all. Um, that's basically it right there. They are engaged. Index degageress. Man, that fucking didn't work at all. Moving on from that. Um, so then Bivin says that uh, Strong versus Kushida will eventually happen. I hope whatever happens with Kushida, he is all right soon. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez have a split-screen promo, and Dakota has brought the pink and black and also pink attack back. Raquel talks about what moans are in Dakota's body. Stop thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. And Dakota is, like, you know, talking about what she's going to do to her and everything. Um, Raquel says that she, you know, she calls her sidekick, and... Okay, I'm looking forward to this. I think this match will be pretty good. Though Dakota is already doing, you know, some dark matches and everything. I think it's pretty obvious she's probably going to lose... <clears throat> Let's say pull a swerve. Carmelo Hayes versus Duke Hudson. And it's a breakout semifinal match. Whoever wins gets to uh, face Aussie Jones in the finals next week. The toss outside and break. Carmelo really took that bump pretty goddamn hard. Hudson breaks him down, beats him down for a while and everything. And then Hayes comes back and hits a DDT on the apron that looked so goddamn brutal. Like, it was a bad idea to do it. Nothing against either of these guys. These guys are professionals or well-trained. That's stupid. The apron spots are stupid. Stop doing the fucking apron spots. Um, Hayes wins with a uh, leg drop off the top. And then he says, well, you know, I called my shot. And I'm the final boss. And Aussie Jones laughs and everything. It's going to be bigger guy versus smaller guy. Speed versus power, though Aussie Jones has good speed as well. Going to be an interesting match. I'm, um, I'm definitely intrigued to see who wins. I think Aussie Jones will win because this seems like they see something big in him. And then J.C. Jane talks about being unchained. J.C. Jane, my fucking goodness, that's a great look. And, hey, if her and uh, the former Priscilla Kelly, now Gigi Dolan, are teaming up, at least it's some fresh blood in the women's tag division that they apparently feel they need to have. But she has a great look. So, anyway, Grimes then tells Ted he will win on Sunday. And, uh, uh, you know, I got myself in this situation. I'm going to get out of it. You uh, wanted me to be the Million Dollar Champion, and oh, that's my Cameron, and great, this feud's continuing. MSK versus Imperium. Uh, Eichner and Bartel. Eichner really moving around his thick muscle. I know if somebody's watching this, they will appreciate that. So she will appreciate that. Moving on. NXT Tag Team Championship match. Well wrestled. The pace was good. Actually, this was one of the better tag matches they've had recently. I don't see... Why the crowd boos MSK? I'm not saying I like their character that much, but in the ring, they're pretty goddamn good. And Imperium are really good. They're great heels. Walter does show up to some cheers of Walter. Then Ilya shows up and gets slammed on the stage. But Imperium somehow manages to get distracted enough to where they uh, the Imperium bomb gets stopped, or Imperial bomb. <coughs> and MSK wins with the flipping blockbuster. And then Walter is just beating Ilya down. And then it's a three-on-one where... Ilya, you know, beats up Walter a bit uh, after MSK gets laid out because attacking Walter is never a good idea. Even two-on-one, you might have problems. But Ilya's like, ha-ha, I'm going to get in the ring. And then he fights off Eichner and Bartel. And then that chop. I've heard Walter's chops live. I don't know how one particular wrestler, Shaft, managed to no-sell one. 
but I imagine it hurt like a bitch. And also, TV doesn't do justice for just how big Walter is. So we get the uh, takeover card rundown. Joe and Cross have a face-off. Joe has a way with words. Where is Scarlet Chance once uh, Cross shows up? Joe's going to kill you. No, he's not. They just have a pull-apart, a headbutt, you know, and then pull-apart, and Joe dives on everybody. And then it's mauling at first, and Cross throws them into the steps, and then they bash through one wall, they bash through another wall, and somebody else paid for it. And that's it. And then that's it. And I believe um, Vic Joseph said there will be no security this Sunday. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. I know what he means, but still. So yeah, not a bad show. Let's run through um, the TakeOver 36 matches. Basically, there's only five matches, which is probably smart. Walter versus Ilya Dragunov, NXT UK Tag Team Champ... Or NXT UK Tag Team. Yeah, that's going to be a matter. Walter could be the Tag Team Champions all by himself. Ilya is going to win. If Ilya doesn't win... I don't know what the fuck we're doing here. And this is nothing against Walter. Walter has been a tremendous champion, even with the layoff and the fact that, you know, he's wrestled in front of no people uh, wrestling in NXT UK. The fact is, if they don't have Elia beat Walter, then you can't build up anybody else for at least another six months. Elia's got to win. Then he can maybe defend it on a couple of NXT tapings and then go back to NXT UK. You have fresh blood. Maybe Walter can come over for some NXT appearances. But... At this point, you gotta change the championship. You just gotta. Ilya's gonna win. I hope it comes close to matching their classic from last October, I believe. So anyway, Karrion Cross uh, versus Samoa Joe for the NXT Championship. I have Samoa Joe winning only because Cross is probably getting called up to the main roster. And what the fuck difference does it make whether he's a champion or not? It's gonna be kind of 50-50 booking with the guy. And also, Scarlett's gonna have to go with him because she's about the only interesting thing about him. And she ain't even that interesting, but she's more interesting than he is because on his own, yeah, it's just not going to work. Samoa Joe, though, I think will win. I don't know who the fuck he drops it to. He won't hold it for very long, but otherwise, they got to switch a whole bunch of titles here. <laughs> now, one title they won't switch is uh, the Women's uh, Championship, Raquel Gonzalez versus Dakota Kai, because Raquel Gonzalez is going to win. Dakota's going to get called up, unless they just suddenly decide that Dakota's going to stay in NXT for the next six months. Because what Raquel's run, I'm not saying she works as a face. I don't think she works as a face at all. Dakota's kind of the one that you really uh, root for, but yeah, Dakota's got to win. Uh, Dakota's got to win here. She ain't gonna win, unfortunately. She is probably going to do some bigger things on the roster. I mean, think about it. Nikki Ash didn't win the NXT uh, Women's Championship and is now the Raw Women's Champion. I mean, sure, it took a number of years. But the point is, and Bianca didn't win the NXT Women's Championship, and now she's a SmackDown Women's Champion. The point is that Dakota Kai could end up becoming Raw Women's Champion, perhaps beating Nikki Ash, or she could beat Bianca. She could do some stuff. Hell, send her over to NXT UK and have her beat Mako Satomura. I don't suggest that last option, but as much as I like to see Dakota win, no. She ain't winning. Raquel's going to retain. And then LA Knight uh, versus Cameron Grimes with Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Championship match. And if Grimes loses, well, he's no longer the butler, but Ted DiBiase will be Knight's butler. If Grimes doesn't win, I don't know how much more of this storyline it could take. Cameron Grimes will win. Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole, baby. Two out of three falls match. Basically three stages of hell. Singles match, street fight, steel cage. It is exactly the same as the No Way Out 2001 match. Hopefully not as long. Kyle O'Reilly is going to win. Don't have this thing go a fucking hour. Have it go maybe 30, 35 minutes at the most. I mean, that's going to be a bit long, but at least for that, you build it up. You, you know, pay it off with O'Reilly getting the victory in the end. Just end this feud. End it. Have them go their separate ways, such as the way of Journey. But just have this feud end after this. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.